Well, hey, good morning to each and every one of you. So glad uh, you can uh, uh, be a part of this experience that is going to be the 2020 Swiss Pro Slalom. My name is Tony Leifert. Glad to have the pleasure of your company once again. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got plenty of action to come. We've got uh, two rounds uh, to two rounds of skiing to start us off. Here is the format of the tournament. You're going to see that information come up very, very soon. And uh, should be an absolute cracking event. And uh, one of my good friends, uh, uh, Drew Ross, is going to uh, be occupying the uh, the booth uh, with me for a uh, for a good amount of time. Here is the uh, the format: best of two rounds. Four women advance through to the final. Eight men advance through to their final. And uh, and I tell you what, we got some of the uh, the top slum skiers in all the world present here in Claremont, Florida, for this event, and uh, should be an absolute cracker of an event. And uh, don't forget, guys and girls, you could pre if you accurately predict the podium, if you accurately predict the podium for both women and men, you could be in line for winning a fabulous prize. Yes, you can ha you could win. Uh, depending upon which podium you ac accurately predict. Uh, the 66-inch uh, the 2020 D3 Ion, signed by, uh, by Nate Smith and uh, Freddie Winter, both world champions. Or if you accurately predict the women's podium, then you could win a Connolly GTR 66-inch signed by Manon Castard. That is for our uh, skier vote, our... Uh, a skier audience vote. You can go to Swiss Pro Slana for that. You can also vote for skier of the day. And uh, that uh, that will pick the skier that is uh, warranted that distinction. And that particular athlete, depending upon how many votes they get, will win themselves an edge binding. So, beautiful conditions and uh, can't expect anything less here at uh, Swiss. And uh, Drew Ross going to switch you on right there and uh, good morning to you sir good morning Tony we are ready for some action yes indeed yes indeed and the uh, tell you what the sun is sun is up it's shining right now the uh, the sun is at the back to our to, to our skiers who will be coming in on their opening passes on and indeed uh, every odd numbered pass uh, from from there on in but uh, but I tell you what, I mean, normally we would have this this competition around about May time. You know, it's you know when, you know when the skiers are just, you know, getting out of their off season. You know, they're just trying to get fired up and accept, say, for a few skiers who skied in the Moomba Masters, they're not really a hundred percent going into the season. But we're at the end of the season right now, and COVID nineteen and all of that has uh, it's had a dramatic impact upon the sport. But I tell you what, I mean, the anticipation for what's to come is is, absol is absolutely, you know, mind blowing right now. Yeah, we're seeing it weekend after weekend. The skiers are, are in a situation where they haven't had to globe trot, if you will, and run around the world competing and you know, beating themselves down with energy. Instead, they've been able to to uh, really focus on on performances and almost reinventing what perfection is. And we're going to see some big, big scores today across the field. And we're seeing a, a view on the starting dock, uh, Natasha Rocha from uh, from Namibia on the dock there in the foreground. In the background there, you see Aurea Yoga. And uh, that that's a very good point as it happens. I mean, I mean, the skiers haven't traveled around the world nearly as much or around the country. But I tell you what, in the last few days, I don't know whether you've heard or, or seen on social media, but the likes of Will Asher and JT have like, absolutely been on fire with their slalom scores at one of the uh, the recent tournaments over at, uh, at Jack Travers and and a, and a pending world men's overall record is going to be submitted shortly courtesy of Dorian Llewellyn so uh, the these skiers have got energy to burn right now yeah it's 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 pretty amazing what we're seeing in the men's field is is nothing short of phenomenal the uh the 39 pass historically was a big deal, and it still is. But 41 seems to be the new 39, and we're seeing we're seeing you know several of these top skiers be able to knock it down with some regularity when when the conditions fall in line. And and it you know, today looks like it's going to be one of those days. You make that sound like a fashion statement. The 41 is the new 39, I guess. 
Well, it, it's, you know, when you watch Will run it like he did last weekend, when you watch mm -hmm. JT with the power and, and uh, just able to project himself up on the boat the way he does and, and uh, keep things going with consistency is really, really amazing. And then, you you know, you tie in some of the other names who, who have been successful with, with taking down the 41 pass, and, and we're going to see some great stuff today. Indeed. All right. So some good views around the uh, the facility there, the starting dock. There's our schedule starting off at 8 a.m. sharp, which is within uh, three minutes uh, from now. And uh, uh, great to great to hear of our viewers that are uh, tuning in from around the world. We got viewers from South Korea, from Australia, uh, Denmark, from Germany or specifically the uh, the area of Germany called Bavaria and uh, from uh, from Colombia as well, but uh, for those of you guys that are tuning in, tuning in from, from elsewhere in the world, don't be shy. Just uh, just comment on the the right hand side of the uh, of the video on the uh, the YouTube channel, and uh, let us know what you think about uh, what you're seeing right now. Uh, give us your reactions, and and also take some time to enter our audience competition to win those fabulous prizes that I uh, mentioned a little bit earlier on. Uh, we're in we're inside the boat right now, looking at Becky Lathrop and. Uh, we've got our crew in there and once they return to the dock they'll be handing off a slalom line to natasha rosha who will be our first competitor out uh, from namibia so i tell you what uh i mean at this at this point of the season the uh the sun here uh, does does it does get a little bit bright and, and i mean it i mean it comes up from a different place compared to compared to May, you know, so it, it might throw off the skiers a little bit, but these skiers are, uh, are well versed in, in all conditions, including absolute perfect, which we have here at Swiss, and uh, getting ready to go to kick off this event for 2020, an event that very few people ever believed would come to pass, but uh, we worked hard, we made it happen, and here it is, 2020 Swiss Pro Slalom, getting ready to, to take to the water. And our first competitor out, and there you see her, is Natasha Rosha. And she comes to us all the way from Namibia. Hailing from Namibia, Natasha is also a Swiss resident here. Her family is one of the owners, and Natalia, although she is from Namibia, spends much of her time right here at Swiss. All right, here we go. 14.25 meters, our opening pass. A little broken over into number one, but managing to hold her shoulders up. I think her best score uh, produced at the Swiss Pro Slalom in recent years has been a one at 38 off or 11.25 meters, but makes very, very light work of 14.25 meters or a 28 off. So uh, just, just trying to find her bearings, just feeling out the water. I mean, it's not like she hasn't skied here before or on a regular basis, but uh, originally from the city of Windhoek in, uh, in Namibia and uh, spends most of her time in this area. Anything you see there uh, uh, strike you out the ordinary, uh, Drew? Uh, N Natasha's strong, maybe a little timid on that gate. It'd be nice to see her uh, start to you know, open things up a bit. But again, it's, it's, it's the 28 off pass, 14 meter pass, it's her first pass. She's just uh, you know, getting, getting situated, uh, getting things flowing and, and uh, ideally setting herself up well for the, for the passes to come. All right, then, continuing to roll right along. We've got some viewers coming in from Costa Rica and uh, from Luxembourg, the Grand Duchy. And uh, got some views at the starting dock right now. We've got a couple of our officials. There's uh, Rea Yoga, who comes to us uh, from Switzerland. Should feel right at home here. Here we go. This is Natasha Rocha. All right, here we go. Getting a little broken up into buoy number three, but managing to still hold her poise. Okay, that's a good hustle for Natasha. It was not the start that she was looking for whatsoever, but she managed to scrap and, and, and stay strong. And at the end of the day, you know, that, that goes a long way. But look for Natasha to want to improve upon that gate without a question. 
So, six buoys at 30 minutes. We're going to take a look at the instant replay here. And uh, you mentioned that she was a little bit timid on her gates. I think she uh, kind of upped the ante there, and uh, that, that probably more than anything else enabled her to, uh, to complete this run, despite one or two errors. Looks like she's getting a little strung out there on, a one, on one or two of those turns, but let's see if she can knuckle down and get through 12 meters, which is the next run. 45 second drop on each end, giving the skiers ample time to, uh, to drop their heart rate down. All right, here we go. This is Natasha Rasha. This is 12 meters. Oh, and not getting the best of starts. So it's going to be a half a buoy total on 12 meters for Natasha. That's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, uh, it is. So Natasha Rosha, half a buoy on 12 meters and getting even more broken over into buoy number one there, Andrew. So, half a buoy it is. So yeah, we're just looking at one of our previous runs uh, for the, well, that was her previous run, 12 meters, just just not getting the start that she wanted and now it's gonna have to be reliant upon round two to get her best score in this uh, this competition. So our very first competitor from Namibia, uh, half a buoy, 12 meters. And now we turn our attention to Switzerland and uh, we'll see uh, uh, Rhea Yoga. Tony, you, you uh, brought up an interesting point. Uh, well, a great point, actually. So the format here at the Swiss Pro, all pros will ski two rounds. And your best score is going to determine whether or not you're a finalist. So Natasha did not get what she wanted out there whatsoever. But she'll have another chance. And the stakes are high. She's going to have to go out and throw a big score down. And obviously, as we get further down the list, I mean, it's not just a case of getting the, uh, the best score your best score but also support it with a backup score because there could be a situation as is typically the case with these women very close in parity that that they actually tie so they would actually have to go back on their uh, their their secondary score to see if they make it through to the next round of the competition that's right it's you know on one hand you want to think of your your bad round as a throwaway but it's not really a throwaway because the log jams happen in slalom and you know, it's a situation where there invariably will be a cut line that, that forms, and the athletes know that. And they're going to be chasing a score in excess of the cut line, but also ensuring that they can manage to make that cut. So the backup score is going to be vital. All right, then. Here we go. This is a oh, very aggressive start into buoy number one. I mean, she, she made that turn. There was nothing subtle about that. 14.25 meters. This is Rhea Yaga. Not too bad there, Drew. Yeah, a good solid pass. Well, we'll take a look at this gate shot again because, I mean, I took a... Okay, first of all, let's hear from Wade. Hi, Wade Cox on the dock here with Alice Bagnoli. Kind of an interesting role for you because not only are you part of the TWBC, but this is your home lake as well, right? Yeah, definitely. I definitely consider this my second home. Um, I think Swiss Pro Slalom is a great tournament. I think I have a little bit more pressure because it's my second home and I'm kind of helping out TWBC, but it's going to be a great tournament, hopefully, and the webcast, hopefully, is going to be great as well. A little bit different to get to just wake up and literally jump in the golf cart and come down on the start dock, huh? Yeah, I was thinking about this morning. I'm like, I definitely have half an hour more rather than uh, just wake up super early. But it's weird to just wake up and walk to the dock and be already at the dock. But it feels good. It feels good. Yeah, good deal. Good luck, Alice. Back to you, Tony. Thank you very much, Wade. You know, and uh, it's 
Some good comments there from uh, from Aliche. And uh, coming back, this is Vareya Yoga. Starting to find a rhythm, starting to find a comfort zone out there. This is 13 meters. I like her style out there. And uh, looking very, very strong on that, on that second pass. Not nearly as aggressive on the gates there. She, I think she probably figured that she doesn't need, need to work that hard to run, uh, run that pass. Let's have a look and, uh, at a gate shot into buoy number one. A little on the tail there, but still managing to, uh, to let the ski run, uh, Drew. Yeah, that we see a variety of different gate styles, and Alice, er, excuse me, Reyes seemed to be carrying a little more speed into that gate, a little more speed in the glides, so she had a had a better had a better flow out to one, and and it, it's reflected all the way through the pass. You see her, you see her continuing to, you know, keep moving, um, more up course without question. Yes, indeed, and as you and as we progress more and more down the list to, to where we see the likes of Jamie and Whitney and Manon and Regina, you'll see that their gate pullout is has some great timing, has some great solidity to it. And uh, let's have a look and see. This is Rea Yoga from Switzerland. This now is 12 meters. She's already in the lead, having gone past half a buoy on this pass. Like her style out there, this, oh, a little bit on the back, but she had enough in hand to run 12 meters there, Drew. Well, I think she'll be happy to get that one out of the way. It's, it's nice to have a, a pass through 12. She'll be coming in at 11, and, and that's a good way to, to start things for, for Rhea. All right, so, yeah, just looking at... Just looking at that pr approach, I mean, it just seems to be getting better and better with each pass. Although into number two, she uh, got strung out a little bit and managed to get the ski round, but continued to run down course. And uh, a little bit of slack line off number four, but she stayed aggressive. And that's the most, that's the key. You know, if, if the chips are down, you can't just, you, you just can't let the, uh, the the handle go towards the boat. You've got to get down and uh, and get nasty sometimes. She's got a great one three five turn to depend on too. And and uh, you know for the left foot forward skiers out there, sometimes you'll see you know that they can get, they can become a little bit down course, and then they've got that bomb to drop on buoys three and five that that can really be a an almost reset for where they are in the course. All right, let's have a look and see. Rea Yoga. This is eleven point two five meters off thirty eight off. Entry. Oh, not a not a particularly good start off buoy number one, but managing to get round number two, and that is quite literally all she wrote for a two buoy count at eleven point two five meters. That is Switzerland's Rea Yoga. We'll take a look at the instant replay in just a moment or so, but uh, it all started with the gates, and uh, about there is where she let go of the tension towards the boat and then things really started to uh, to turn pear-shaped a little bit off number two tried to get outside number three but not quite and she knows it too all right so two skiers down uh we've already had our first skier go through 12 meters into 38 off and uh Rue, take a look at this again what do you see well, it actually wasn't the worst gate in the world, but she managed to coast and get on the tail out to one, failed to, failed to keep that mass moving back in, and before you know it, you know, she's behind the feet on the tail of the ski, cruising down course. All right then, so our next skier to come, Jesse Duberton. So, Jesse Duberton, looking strong, looking in very, very good uh, form on the opening pass of 14.25 meters. I don't, uh, don't anticipate any of our uh, female skiers at this point in the competition to be starting any, uh, 
any shorter than 14.25 metres at this stage and certainly no longer in terms of rope length. But uh, Jesse Duberton looking good. And uh, f skier formerly of uh, Florida Southern College. Looking nice out there and looking very much in shape, Drew. Yeah, it's a good strong pass for Jesse. He's got a very disciplined technique. All right, so just getting the angle off the turn and just holding on to it. Going cross course, I like what I'm seeing here as I'm sure that uh, that our audience out there, 300 plus of you people out there watching, thank you very much indeed. And uh, we'll go back uh, to uh, to wade intermittently uh, between here and the dock. Uh, uh, but let's have a look at Jesse Duberton from the United States. Oh, look at that round buoy number one. Round number two, handle up a little higher, has to be said, but uh, but managing to keep everything going, everything moving forward. There we go. Not the not the cleanest of passes that we're going to see on 12 meters, but it is effective, Drew. All right, and before we uh, talk to Drew, let's talk to Wade. Hi, back in the dock here, Wade Cox with Raya Jorger. Second skier on the dock. You ran the 35, but not so maybe good at 38 or the 11 meters? Um, I actually had a good start for my standards, but then, I don't know, I just went all, a little too hard at two ball, but I'm still really happy with my skiing. It's my first pro event, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> and you're a Swiss uh, national, so this is like your home event, right? Yeah, I mean, it's my home site too. Um, I ski here all the time, so it was really nice. <laughs> and one more round to go. All right, back to you, Tony. No worries there, Drew, and uh, have to give a big shout and a big shout out there to Rare Yoga, who helped TWBC out immensely during the Good Water Ski Nationals that uh, that took place several, several weeks ago over at Tri Lakes in Louisiana. She certainly helped out with our crew. And uh, let's have a look and see what Jesse Duperton can do. Good gate shot, or oh, nice extension around buoy number one. It's imperative that uh, you keep the line tight well into the pre-turn and the turn's execution. I'll tell you what, 12 meters. There you go. That's the way to do it there, Drew. Nice strong pass by Jesse. She's, she's got a, like I mentioned earlier, just a very disciplined technique. She, she manages to keep that chest up, maintain great structure very strong position all the time so just builds a big cushion a big margin for error and it's uh it's great to see uh you know nice nice strong fundamentals there yes indeed and uh yeah the fundamentals just making sure that you've got some good angle across the back of the boat good some good knee bend into the turn and just really working on it and on your angle Across the back of the boat, look look at our uh, stats on Rare Yoga, and looks like she's pulling a 500 pounds. Uh, the ratio of 3.6 to one compared to her body weight, so uh, feeling pretty strong out there, I would imagine. So, as we look at uh, Licha Bagnoli, here is Jesse Doberton. On 11.25 meters, more than two will give her the lead, and it's not going to happen for her, unfortunately. Horrible start on buoy number one, and paid the price for it there with uh, with her inability to get around number two at this juncture. That's not going to be the gate that Jesse was hoping for. It, 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 this it, it's just incredible how you can you can have s such a strong position and everything else, but at the end of the day, slalom is such a dynamic event and and you know tempo and and synchronized with the boat are just key jesse manages to lose the rope out through number one and and that's it all right then so continuing to work our way along and uh, we've got uh, we've got an audience out there we've got a little bit of a celebrity audience out there joe howley the current 
IWWF World Slalom Champion is uh, joining us. Uh, good day there, mate. Jo Joel Howley there. And uh, uh, coming in. And uh, there's a few questions being... Uh, being put on the uh, the comments. Try and keep them PG, please. Thank you very much. One of our uh, one of our people that's uh, that's asking a question, and I'll uh, go to that in a moment. Whilst we see Alicia Bagnoli come into the course on 14.25 meters. Good aggressive start. Considers this a home site more often than not. Liche is just such a powerful skier, really in command out there. Yes, indeed. I like I like what she's doing out there, Liche. And uh, we're going to go to the dock and Wade Cox. Hi, on the dock here with Jesse Doberton. And Jesse, you're becoming like a regular now on the women's circuit here. Ran the 35, but didn't go so good at 38, huh? Yeah, not quite what I wanted, but it's a great place to start out today. And have you ever skied here at Swiss before? This is my third Swiss Pro. A little different on that end down there, huh? It is. It's a little bit uh, more narrow than what I'm used to, but it's okay. It's good to have different sites to ski on. So, and the water is gorgeous. Awesome. Good, good luck next round, huh? Back to you, Tony. All right, then. Thanks a lot, Wade. And uh, we see there Becky Lathrop in the, uh, the tow boat, uh, an experienced uh, uh, person at the helm and uh, looking pretty stylish as well with her signature uh, hat. I don't know what style you'd call that. It's definitely not a Panama or anything like that. It's probably like an, an Aussie bush hat or something like that. But, uh, but there you go. Here we go, we've got Alicia Bagnoli, and here is our aerial coverage on 13 meters. Definitely a neat perspective. Round buoy number four and five, 13 meters. Oh yeah, all over that pass. So good, good skiing there from Alicia Bagnoli. Now, one of the questions that was asked uh, by, uh, by one of our reviewers, Peter uh, King, says, uh, what does Tony mean by getting strung out in towards the buoys? Well, basically what that entails is not staying strong enough uh, with, your, with your shoulders and your arms. When you, whenever you go into your, whenever you're approaching your edge change, the arms and the handle are already coming out away from your body. And as the ski starts coming away from you into your edge change, you, you're getting that separation that you don't particularly want. That is what I mean if you're getting a little strung out into the buoys. And Tony, it, it, it goes beyond just being strong off the second wake. So much of how the mechanics of slalom and the, and, and the move back to center are designed will impact whether or not the skier, you know, quote unquote, gets strung out or gets pinged toward the boat. It's, it, it's about being in motion versus static and blocking and, and you know, symptomatic of, of being strung out is, is, you know, failure to have left that buoy line, you know, in, in motion, carrying the speed through the finish. Right you are. Here we go. This now is 12 meters for Alicia Bagnoli. Oh, come on, Alicia. Round buoy number five, looking strong, looking in good shape and gets around all six buoys, not... Not the easiest looking pass that we've seen from uh, from Alice on uh, on 12 meters, but effective nonetheless. Alice really shows her maturity on this pass. A few a few hiccups here and there, but it, it's it just shows that it's a uh, a pass she really doesn't have any troubles with. She just needs to you know maintain her organization and and you know be able to build on it as she as she comes toward the 11 meter pass. All right, so the top score at 11.25 meters we've seen so far is by uh, Rhea Yoga. And look how she carries that handle into her uh, 246 side. That's, that's something that I've seen a lot in recent times from, from uh, uh, Aliche. And, you know, that kind of helps her a little bit and allows her to get that ski turned around whenever that line is a little looser coming into the pre-turn, wouldn't you agree? 
So, here we go. A bow side view of the boat, courtesy of Ravenol Oil. We thank the thank them for their support alongside our uh, other sponsors, and uh, we'll uh, we'll display those to you in short order. Here we go, Alicia Bagnoli, round buoy number two. She's in the lead. She's round number. Oh, come on, keep going. Tries to make a play on four, but three is going to be it there for Alicia. Well, that's a good solid start. Three to eleven. Not, nothing. Nothing to be too disappointed with, although I know she's got her eyes on being able to complete a six buoy pass at 11. Remember, for the fans out there, there are only four women advancing to the final here, so it, it it's going to take a big score. Yes, indeed, and she was a successful turn away from actually advancing through to the women's slalom final over at the Travers Grand Prix a couple of weeks ago, looking to redeem herself uh, from uh, from that situation. And three buoys, well, she's in the lead right now, but probably probably asking too much of that score to, uh, to progress through to the next round of the competition. All righty, folks. Yeah, definitely getting a little bit deep with a couple of those turns, but now we're working very, very quickly. We're going to have to work quickly because the uh, the sun uh, sun dips below the horizon a lot earlier in October than it does in May. This is Anna Gay, 14.25 meters. For those out there probably used to seeing Anna on the trick ski, Anna's a, a, a world champion in, in the trick event multiple times and has also been on that world record line. Just an outstanding athlete, Team USA. Yes, indeed. She recently recorded a personal best, a new personal best of one buoy at 39 and a half fast. So she definitely has the chops so far as slalom skiing goes uh, uh, on top of what she's already accomplished uh, on, the, uh, on the trick ski world, uh, world title had uh, have had several stabs at the world women's uh, a trick record uh, in the past and uh, and you know being as supple as she is and being as agile as she is on the trick ski that kind of uh, segues itself onto the slalom course in in some way or fashion as well well it does for sure tony but uh, you know i i think we don't want to underestimate the time anna's put into slalom she's been a top phenomenal slalom skier since her junior years it's just been uh you know one of those things where it takes time to come into her own but i think we've got a a fun next chapter ahead for anna as she uh really pushes the whole women's field in slalom yes indeed a student at the university of alabama over there in tuscaloosa so I'm sure she slalom into the strains of uh, of roll tide and uh, gets round buoy number six and through the exit gates. Nicely done. And uh, before we continue on with her, let's uh, let's hear from Wade. Hey, on the dock here with Alice. So maybe okay, three at thirty-eight. The lead so far, but a little bit maybe left. Yeah, I definitely need to be more confident about my skiing. Um, three is good. It's not going to be enough. I definitely need to run 38 to be in the final, hopefully. But three is all right. It's kind of a basic score. Um, I need to be more confident about my skiing and trust it a little more, to be honest. But that was good. And now you got to go back to work. We'll let you get. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. No worries. No worries. And uh, certainly some interesting words there from Alicia. I mean, three or four years ago, she could barely speak a uh, conversational English. Now she's talking to the camera and going, doing the whole uh, broadcasting style. So it's great to see that level of uh, progression, not only with uh, with a conversation, but also with her skiing. Here is Anna Gay. Oh, not the best of starts. Well, that's really unfortunate. Anna has been 
slaloming up a storm, and and she she looks at the top of her game. So you know, it's it's it, I love the format here. I love the two rounds. Best score is going to determine your your ranking to move into the final. Uh, watch for Anna to really throw down in the second round. Yeah, she's going to have to throw down. She's going to basically have to ski out of her mind, you know, because she knows that the likes of you know, uh, Regina Jaquist and Manon Castard and Jamie Bull, you know, and the likes of those skiers uh, that are that are on the list, they're well capable of getting deep into 39 and a half off, if not running it. So it's going to be a tall order. And uh, where it stands right now, Franny Gay is she's currently uh, in dead last right now alongside uh, Natasha Rocha. So... Next skier to go, Canadian Paige Reaney. Whew. Tell you what, it's getting a little bit hot out here, and actually one of our commenters wanted, uh, wanted to find out what's the water temperature. Well, we're going to try and get that information to you very, very soon, uh, one of our commenters. Yeah, we'd, 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 we'd do our best to please. Uh, Ed... Air 79, water temperature about 84, and uh, wind, like what wind? Okay, just a, maybe a little bit of a gust here and there, but nothing nothing too serious. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to update date that through the day, but uh, here is our top four right now, out of the four skiers that have, uh, out of the five that have actually skied. Uh, Bagnoli with uh, three at 11.25 meters is your lead. Yoga in second place with two. Jesse Duberton in third, and uh, Natasha Rocha and Anna get both tied for fourth with half on 12 meters. So those are your five skiers so far. All right, Pedrini. So, so Drew, tell us a little bit more about Pedrini. Well, Paige is, a, is an overall skier, member of Team Canada, member of uh, Team Nautique as well. She's just a, a super overall skier. Slalom is her best event. She's she's really you know at the top of the the top of the field all the way through the junior ranks now in the U21 category. Paige is a contender everywhere she skis. All right, looking strong and uh, riding that that uh, that brand new uh, radar uh, slam ski. Uh, the, I think I think their 2021 edition of the Vapor, a white top, and. Uh, Looking, looking very, very strong on it. And uh, I tell you what, a couple of seasons ago, I mean, she was running consistently through 11.25 meters into 10.75 meters and really looking to be on fire. But she's kind of gotten into that little bit of a rut so far as her consistency goes. And she's looking to try and get back to those high echelon scores. Well, and she's she's right there, Tony. Paige had a had a, a top performance this past week over at Travers, running running two at ten, two at thirty nine, and um, you know she looks as strong as ever to me. All right, then we'll see uh, see what uh, what Paige Reaney will conjure up, so to speak, with the remaining passes. A uh, uh, crowd is uh, starting to assemble around the mid dock area. We've also got our uh, chief safety officer there, uh, Karen Melnick. Uh, uh, keeping an eye on things, and uh, hopefully she won't have to work too hard during the course of this weekend. We have a top uh, top class group of officials. We even have our own uh, OA video, our uh, VAO, our video assistant official. So here we go. That's Paige Reaney through the exit gates. That is 30 meters. And uh, let's have a dockside conversation with Wade. Who you got? Hi, on the dock here with Allie Nicholson. Uh, she's going to be coming up later in women's slalom. So what's your pregame? Uh, <laughs> I don't really have that much. Zane and I kind of wake up on the way here. I walk around a little bit. Um, you got me. I was about to kind of change, get loosened up just a little bit. But I just... I like to hang out. I don't like to take it too serious. I'm here for fun, so. Yeah, well, we like that, and the conditions are great, huh? Oh, yeah, it's looking great out here. I'm really excited. Yeah, tear it up, girl. Thank you. Back to you, Tony. All right, then. So some pregame stuff there from uh, from Ali Nicholson. My pregame is a Pop-Tart and some chocolate milk. Well, there you go. <laughs> 
That probably explains why I'm this shape, I guess. Anyway, uh, uh, Paige Reaney. Tony, don't sell yourself soft short, buddy. Just leave the self-deprecating to me. All right, then. Here we go. This is Paige Reaney. Has skied for Canada on a number of occasions and uh, really trying to trying to solidify a pace or a place on Canada's uh, World Elite team as uh, they get prepared to defend their team overall title with the next World Championships, of which no one knows where it's going to be or when, but uh, hopefully that information will, uh, will be readily available to us soon. But either way, Pedrini's got to be ready and she looks, looks on fire right now. Yeah, Tony, just a little correction. Paige is more than solidified on that open team. She's, uh, you know, regularly into 39 and smashing, you know, into 9,000 points all the time in tricks. And, and uh, i got to remember she's an overall skier too. So she's a mainstay, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's great to have some, some top overall skiers with Team Canada moving into the World Championships here. Yes, indeed. And the whole selection of the, the top teams going into the World Championships, I mean, I refer to Canada and the United States and even to a lesser extent, you know, Italy, France, Great Britain and the like, you know, I mean, I mean, some of the teams actually have purpose made computer programs to like plug in the scores from competing skiers. Uh, most of, most of the teams of that high echelon pick the overall skier first, and then then they go to the best two event, and then they go to the best single event, and or, or the, uh, or the place of field. But it's uh, it's it's very technical. It's very very refined, and uh, Pedrini is a physical part of all of that as she l comes into the course at 11.25 meters, and exits at one. Paige will be disappointed with that. She, uh, I expected that she may be the first skier to smash the 38, but we're going to see a, uh, a strong second round from Paige, I'm sure. Well, she's going to have to dig deep here for round number two and just, just didn't get the best of starts and just got on the tail on buoy number one and just couldn't get off it. And... I mean, for skiers such as Anna Gay and Pedrini at this point, you know, I mean, you look at the, you look at them right now, and those are two skiers that are going to have to seriously ski out of their minds to actually make a play on possibly making it through to the next round of the competition. And one buoy of 38 off isn't going to do it. Part of the story we got to talk about as it shapes up, Tony, is that headwind on the first pass. It, you know, maybe Paige didn't quite factor that into, you know, into the gate and run on, on the 11 meter pass coming back. Right now, skiers starting at 28 off are, are by design electing to have that 38 off pass with the wind. It's awesome for setting up for 39, which is, which is a, a great thing, but you got to be cognizant. You got to be aware. The wind's pushing out there. 38 with the tail is, is, is a factor. Yes, indeed. And also the, uh, the sun as well needs to be taken into account as well. And, I, and I'll explain that in, the, in a moment. This is Ali Garcia, skier that's definitely uh, raising her stock in, uh, in women's slalom. Looking strong. Very, very aggressive on 14.25 meters and not a foot wrong. And before we continue on, let's have a word with Wade on the dock. Hey, thanks, Tony. I'm on the dock here with Regina Jaquis, our only champion of this event, five times. So we asked Allie uh, just before, what's your pregame? You know, it's always perfect conditions here at Swiss Pro. So um, definitely with the first round, you want to go out, definitely feel the lake, but get a good score so you don't have that pressure to um, fall on the second round to make that top finals. Um, it's a long day, too, because we do everything in one day, which is a unique format, um, but it's a really cool format, too. So kind of start conserving energy, but playing it smart, too. Who, who do you want to say hi to at home? Well, of course, my family, but definitely my mom. It's her birthday, so happy birthday, Mom. Um, but, you know, everybody that's watching and everything, thanks for your support and tuning in to the webcast. Awesome. Happy birthday, Mom. Back to you, Tony. And yes, indeed, happy birthday, Karen Jaquis. Uh, uh, glad to uh, glad to see that you're uh, tuning in and uh, uh, joining us here at uh, the Swiss Pro Slalom 2020. 
Ali Garcia. Coming back on the even-numbered pass. And uh, the sun might have a little bit of an effect on our skiers, especially as they head into 135, because as the sun goes in and out through the trees, it kind of creates a little bit of a strobing effect, which, uh, which could uh, distract uh, one or two of the skiers. Ali's a slalom specialist, lives here in Florida, about 30 minutes away in Winter Garden. Strong and fluid. And I mean, you can definitely see on the instant replay, just, just, just watch and see how, that's, how that sun reveals itself in a, in a face and then just a, just a few more feet, it goes dark and then it goes light again, that little bit of strobing effect uh, from, uh, from the sun. Nothing too much there that can be done about that really, but uh, uh, certainly something uh, to bear in mind as skiers come back on their, uh, their even numbered passes. As we have a look at the dock and see uh, Luis uh, uh, Jaramillo from, uh, from Colombia. And Pedrini's uh, stats are up there up on the screen for uh, 498 pounds, 3.7 to 1 in comparison to her body weight. Here we go. This is Ali Garcia. Oh, handle up a little bit high. Now she's going to have to knuckle down hard with this one. This is uh, the pass of 12 meters. Looking strong. And six buoys. Had to make it the hard way, but six buoys it is. Yeah, good discipline by Ali. Like you mentioned, Tony, not, not exactly the start she would have, would have looked for, but it didn't pose much of a threat. Ali's very uh, familiar with where she is in, in terms of the course. Her, her awareness is top, and you know, she didn't panic. She managed to just you know, stay strong, do the work where it counts as she, as, you know, as she moves into the wake and through the wake, maintain her course position, and, and uh, nice solid pass at 12 meters. All right, and for those of you that have just joined us, this is the 2020 Swiss Pro Slalom event. Uh, uh, if you are looking for skiers such as the likes of Natasha Rocha, uh, Ria, Ria Yorga, uh, Jesse Dubatin, Alice Bagnoli, Anna Gay, and Paige Rini, uh, you can always scrub, uh, to scrub on the... Uh, on the player, the uh, the bottom of the player to uh, to an earlier time in the webcast, or you can just hit the live button, and that will take you exactly to where we are right now, live with our continuing coverage of this event. So coming back right now, this is Ali Garcia, the best that we've seen at 11.25 meters, and that is from Alicia Bagnoli is three. Look at her go, and it looks like three at 11.25 meters is still going to hold the lead at this time. Just a little hesitation through the finish of ball one. Watch here on the gate. Ali's got a nice, nice wide pull out, carrying some speed. Smooth in, maybe, maybe a little tailish into the wake. And there's a hesitation. Yeah, exactly. Good strong cut out to two, but maybe just a little bit further down course than she would have liked to be. Try to make a serious play on number two. Try to get, pull a little bit of knee bend and try to get that ski round. But unfortunately, putting that much forward pressure on the slalom ski that quickly, that dramatically, guess what the fin's going to do? <laughs> so... Ali Garcia taking a look at this again, Drew, and just too much pressure, too late, and the, s and the fin pops out, and it's basically a case of goodbye, Mr. Bond. Well, a fair gamble for her. I mean, she didn't quite have the number one she wanted and, and needed a turn at two, and, you know, really wasn't too far out of things in terms of being able to be off to three, and, you know, uh, watch for Ali to, to have that same level of intensity and, and hopefully a different result in the second round. All right, we are on skier number eight of 14. I mean, we've gone, we've gone absolutely blistering down this list. I mean, there has been no stopping us. We are on skier number eight of 14. This is Luisa Jaramillo. This is a fun skier to watch. Luisa's a skier coming, coming out of, out of uh, South America, Bogota to be specific. And, and Luisa's one of those skiers that will be competing in August in the U-17 World Championships as well. She's young. A young girl just learning to drive right now. So, watch, uh, watch Louisa. 
Yes, indeed. And uh, Louisa, who spends the majority of her time training over in the Florida Panhandle, uh, as we take a look at our sponsors, uh, to you, uh, Energy Bars, uh, Syndicate Skis, Pro Gear, Edge Binding, Shore Path, uh, Denali Skis, uh, Aid, Life Vest, uh, Connolly, and uh, D3, along with Swiss Water Ski Resort, and uh, predict the podium. And, uh, and win a ski. Go to SwissProSlalom.com for all the details. Make sure you get your entry in before the start of round two. That, that, and then we'll, we'll cut it off at that point. So if you don't have your entries in by then, tough luck. Here we go. And uh, also take a look at Swiss Water Ski Resort uh, to book your time here, uh, your, uh, your next vacation. SwissWaterSkiResort.com, find out more details about this beautiful facility here. And uh, as I said, Luisa Jaramillo uh, actually is going to be graduating from high school in, uh, in South Walton High School, which is in the Florida Panhandle, not too far away from uh, the World Water Ski Center in Santa Rosa Beach. Looking very light, looking very strong. Doesn't look like she's putting an awful lot of effort out there to get from one side to the other, Drew. Well, she's a super efficient skier. It's, it's, it's funny. It was only about eight, eight or nine years ago when I was working with Luisa to learn the course. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, she's, she's young, tall, and talented. And, you know, she's a skier who's taken down the 11 meter pass on on quite a few occasions and and Luis is going to be a name that you know at the pro level we get to follow for for many years to come so she learned from a master naturally and uh, and it shows i mean i mean you just you just look at her position into the turn how easy she brings that ski around and goes cross course you know i mean that's 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 an advantage of actually having having some great coaching you know, right from the get-go, and so we, I mean, man, I mean, look at this. I mean, we, we've just turned into a prize pro shop here. We've got, we've got the uh, the D three I on here. We've got the Conley GTR that will be uh, prizes. We've got these prizes for our skiers. We've got the got the strongest pull. We got it all here. We're going nuts. Here we go. This is Luisa Jaramillo, skier number eight of fourteen. Look at this. Did they even shorten the rope? This is a strong pass. It is. Wow. That is a six buoy count at 12 meters. Now, a lot of the previous skiers made it look, look hard work, but Louisa, just a walk in the park, as it were. And it all starts with this gate shot, Drew. Yeah, right foot forward skier, Luisa really has developed a lot of consistent angle on that gate. A lot, lot of good power and, and uh, is able to, able to create a lot of space out there on the course. Right foot forward, and I mean, just take a look at this turn into number two. She just out squeeze in and just allows the ski to come up underneath the line. Her offside turn just allows the ski to finish off naturally, and boom, right there, it's a 12-meter pass. Now, now she doesn't look like she's expended an awful lot of energy out there running those initial passes, which means that she might have a little bit of strength in reserve to actually run 11.25 meters. But uh, I'll tell you what, the wind is starting to pick up a little bit, Drew. That could be a cause for concern. It's all going to come down to the start here. Not too much tension on the line as she uh, makes a turn towards number one, but... That's a great number one. It is. Round buoy number two. Getting her hustle on. Out around three. She's tied the lead. She makes a play on four. She has the lead. And four, four is all. But it is enough for the lead at this point. And you just never know. You just never know how things are going to play out from here on in. But she has the lead score of one buoy at 11.25 meters. Yeah, kind of got a little off balance into buoy number one, but she got the angle. Ooh, and takes a big old hit from the shoulders. 
And this is where strength comes into play. And she buckled into buoy number five, and that is all over bar the shout in there. So that is going to be four buoys and eight skiers in, six skiers to go to round off, round off the women. Hard to tell what it's going to take to make it through, and bear in mind they have another round of skiing, but... You know, it's, it could be anyone's game at this point. So Louisa, nearly 600 pounds pulled against the boat, our strongest athlete out there among the women, as we now look towards Chelsea Mills. Now she is an extraordinary athlete, and I'll tell you more about her in a moment. Chelsea Mills coming up now. Tony, you mentioned in the uh, in the stats uh, the strong pull of Louisa. That's a that's an indication of the uh, you know just the the width and and power she's got into the wake. All right, let's hear from Wade at Dockside. Hi, Louisa, four at thirty-eight. Maybe it's going to take a little bit more to make it through to the final, though, huh? Yeah, there's some pretty good skiers, so I think it's going to be boys at thirty-nine. But, yeah, it's, it's very good out there. So what adjustments might you make for the second round? Well, it looks like it's a headwind off the dock, so I might start at 13 instead of 14 meters. But, I don't know, it's a very good sight, so we'll be seeing some very big scores. We'll be cheering for you, girl. Thanks, Tony. All right, thanks a lot, Wade. And, uh, and currently... Uh, right now, we've just seen uh, uh, Chelsea Mills uh, execute her 14.25 uh, meters pass. But, but Drew, I mean, she comes to us out of the world of tennis uh, as, her, as her original primary sport and only got into water ski slalom only within the last, the last few seasons. You know, and obviously her fitness and her strength and everything to do with playing that monster of a game segues itself perfectly to be successful in this event drew uh, chelsea's a chelsea's a technician and and she's a you know a, a consummate and detailed focused technician and you can really see you can really see in chelsea a lot of you know you know a lot of focus on fundamentals a lot of focus on on strictness with a technique and you know, super fit putting up some huge scores lately yeah, and she's she's been quite prolific in the uh, in the skiing circuit. I mean, she uh, I believe she skied in the finals at the uh, the Hilltop uh, Pro Am uh, event up in Arlington in the in Washington State. She featured uh, as well at the Malibu Open not too long ago, and uh, has been has been skiing uh, pretty consistently for all the events that she has been able to to ski in in recent times. What with the pandemic and uh, just just a lack of events uh, during the summer, but uh, obviously has having no trouble uh, staying motivated and staying in shape. You know, tennis kind of does that for you a little bit, I guess. Chelsea's out of uh, Little Mountain Ski Club, just north of Charlotte. North Carolina. Be interesting to see. I, I'm excited, Tony, to follow this strongest pull contest sponsored by Two U Snacks. All right, let's have a look and see. Ooh, takes a big hit off buoy number one. Stands really tall into number into number two, which is her offside turn. She's a lefty, which means a one free five side turn is gonna be more uh, more aggressive. Wow, 12 meters just like that. And there's something that I'm starting to see a little bit as we go down the list, and that is the tension on the line that these skiers have approaching their gate shot and throughout their pullout. So let's have a look at this uh, from Chelsea Mills. Good rotation there off number three, which is a strong side turn. Open and nice and tall and just allowing the ski to do what it's designed to do. A little inside on buoy number five, but managing to take the hit and, uh, 
and just really, really rope that pass, looking, looking strong, and as you said rightly, a true technician of this sport. Yeah, that $500 strongest pull sponsored by TU Snacks is a fun almost side bet, Tony. It'll be interesting to see, you know, maybe uh, you, get a, you get a skier who's already paved the way to the final. It'll be funny to see if they'd go ahead and see how hard they can pull. It, nothing wrong with an extra 500, right? No, absolutely not. I mean, I'd, I wouldn't mind an extra 500 myself. But uh, here we go. This is Chelsea Mills. And don't forget to enter that predict, uh, predictor podium uh, contest, the skier, the, the audience uh, prize, as we see Chelsea Mills get past buoy number three and no further than that, unfortunately. So three at 11.25 meters. That puts her in a tie for second place with Alicia Bagnoli. As we now work down to the, uh, the last five competitors in round one of women's slalom. Now, what do you see here, Drew? Tough to say where exactly things broke down for Chelsea. You know, she, she's out of two ball, not horribly, but she ends up on the tail here at the finish of three, gets totally separated. And probably felt that in her lower back, I can guarantee. But there you go, it is three. It's three at 11.25 meters. And uh, out of our nine skiers that we've had so far, only two have come up short of running a score into 11.25 meters. Almost like a mental error here, because I think, uh, you know, mm. sometimes the thoughts can get a little bit ahead, ahead of the skier. And, and, you know, Chelsea's not in horrible position here, but then, then you know, drops in, drops into the inside a bit, you know, you know doesn't manage to leave the blue line in a, in a solid connected position. All right, then moving right along and being very quick with that, we've got Ali Nicholson. Ali Nicholson, our next competitor, who comes to us out of Tennessee. And Ali Nicholson uh, recently started work at a medical facility uh, in Pensacola in the panhandle of this beautiful state of Florida. And started in on 14.25 meters, unless I hear anything different. And uh, let's hear from the doc, shall we? Wade, what you got? I'm putting Anna Gay out of her comfort zone twice today. She's known as being this fabulous trick skier, but coming out, you know, coming out for a slalom this morning, huh? Yeah, it's, I, I enjoy slalom, and I've been working hard on it. I mean, I didn't do as well as I'd like to this morning, but it's been really fun to, to switch it up just a little bit. For those of at home, what adjustments are you going to try to make for the second round? Uh, I need to be a little bit stronger at 35. I think I just got too nervous and like kind of just went into one really timid and easy and tipped over and yeah, I just need to be a little bit stronger going out there second round. All right, back to you, Tony. All right then, folks. We've got Ali Nicholson and we've got a whole bunch of prizes here on the uh, the stage. We've got a Conley GTR. We've got a, a, a D3 uh, Ion. And those are the top prizes for our uh, audience uh, uh, prize contest. Make sure you go to SwissProSlalom.com to find out more information and to enter your name. Love that bow shot of the ski nautique as it enters the course. All right there, that nautique tow boat, 6.2 liter engine. More than enough power for our skiers. 12 meters, it looks like. It is 12 meters, so she started in at 32 off. So, so 30 meters as we take a look dockside and uh, Jamie Bull, uh, one of our next competitors, in fact, she is the next competitor to, to take to water. And uh, Ali Nicholson doing a grand job out there. And uh, I'm sure that this is being, uh, being in this competition situation is more relief than anything else for, uh, for Ali Nicholson because as the pandemic continues to make an impact upon everyone in society here, she is uh, uh, front and center of all of that mess at the moment, uh, working 12-hour days over at, uh, at a medical facility in, uh, in Pensacola right now. So the fact that she's out here in skiing gives her a little bit of a break, uh, Drew. 
Yeah, but she also keeps putting up bigger and bigger scores. Ali's one of those skiers who's who's really on the rise, and and uh, you know she's she's strong and determined, and and I just love seeing how you know she raises her game every time I watch oh. her ski. All right, now she's put 11.25 meters into the wind. A good strategy. She's she's there. She, look at her go round buoy number three. Little bit of an aero ledge change into number four. She's good for five, and she is our first female competitor to get through 11.25 meters. That is Ali Nicholson. A great pass from start to finish, Drew. Yeah, really no surprise, and you can see you can see the way she almost regulated the pass all the way through. Her awareness in terms of where she is in the course is 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 just top and. And, uh, you know, I, I love that Ali made the decision to do what some might call the right decision in the first round and, and recognize that a, a headwind 38 is going to be, a, you know, a great place to, to start and, and really be the first one to take the pass down. Yes, indeed. Right, you are regulated that pass. I can just feel a little bit of Warren G playing in the background with that one. Certainly. Just roping that pass towards the end. I mean, and fair play to her. I mean, she she put the right pass where she wants it to wanted it to be. Eleven point two five meters into the wind. Everyone that has uh, slammed so far has come in on fourteen point two five meters, putting the wind at their back. You know, with eleven point two five meters. I think if the wind stays from the south, we're going to see uh, a lot of skiers changing things up for the second round. Right, you are. Here we go. This is Ellie Nicholson. Round number one and inside two at 39 and a half off. But I tell you what, she has the lead. And with four skiers remaining now, don't forget we take four through to the next round after we've done the uh, after we've done with the second round. Uh, she's she's put a target up there now. Well, she's put a target out there, but I think I think Ali's going to feel like she left the door open. I mean, moving beyond ball one, and and you know, especially with with just how solid her turns on two and four look, you know, she she's gonna she's gonna wish that she managed to, uh, you know, just have a bit better rope control, you know, through ball one. You can see the gate, you know, she drops in maybe a bit on the tail, has a moment of hesitation there, moving down course, quite a bit of slack. Can't keep things together for the cut to two. Yes, it's it's just one of those, well, if you can indulge me a little bit in a sport analogy, it's like scoring a touchdown uh, with, uh, with a little bit of time left, but then you've left too much time so the opposition does come back and does make that score to, uh, to ultimately win the game, I guess. But... Uh, that's Ali Nicholson with one at uh, at 10.75 meters, one at 39 and a half off. Yeah, she is on the top of the leaderboard. That's a good place to be, but, you know, a lot of skiing left. All right, here we go. And Jamie Bull from Canada, the winner of the Hilltop Pro-Am, which took place a, uh, about two months ago in, uh, in Washington State. And... Uh, actually ran 39 and a half off for the very first time there and set a, a Canadian national under 21 slalom record uh, with that performance and uh, we'll uh, we'll see Jamie go next with a second pass but before that let's hear from Wade thanks Tony here with Allie Nicholson so our first gear to run 38 off one at 39 you're just outside the cut line gotta wait and see huh yeah, I gotta wait and see. I'm not sure that's gonna be enough, and there's a whole nother round of skiing, so felt a little shaky out there today, or that round, hoping to feel a little stronger next time. Uh, got through 38, wasn't pretty, but got through it, so uh, hoping for more next time. And you are our first gear to go on the green, or 32 off. Was it, uh, the, did the wind play any decision in that? Not really, it's what I do at home. Uh, it kind of worked out, it was a headwind 38. I knew I needed to get through it, um, so why, why change the routine? There you go, back to you, Tony. All right, wind starting to gust up a little bit here, as you could probably tell from uh, from behind the announcing point, and uh, obviously going to be a cause for concern. I'm sure that Jamie went in on 13 meters. Is that correct? Yeah, 32 off. For those of you who are not quite dialed into the metric system, as a lot of us are.
Here we go. This is uh, Jamie Bull. And nicely done. Look at her go. Looking very, very comfortable there. That was 12 meters coming back. Started in on 30 meters. It's a strong 35 off pass. Jamie's right. a slalom specialist out of North Bay, Ontario, Canada. And she's, Tony, you mentioned she ran 39. She, she did it again this past week at Travers with, with, a, with a two at 41 score. She's, uh, you know, she's got her eyes set on, a, on another huge season. We've got a big year coming up. We're going to have an under-21 world championship followed by an open world championship. And, and Jamie's, Jamie's a contender in every, everywhere she skis now. Now, would you say that she's probably in, a good, in good shape to actually make it onto the can Canadian team, or would she have to ski as an individual? Well, like you said, it's it's so technical to tell whether you know whether specialists where they fit into you know it it all depends on on the the composition the composition of everything else. But you know she's she's right there in the race, and and uh, I'm sure she'd be happy to help out the team if if the math is such. And you know if not, she's she'll be a she'll be a competitor on the at the world championship without question. I'll actually have you expand upon that a little bit because you were part of a similar situation in 2009 as far as, as my memory serves me correctly. Here comes Jamie Ball. This is 11.25 meters. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. Into the wind. Nicely done. 11.25 meters off 38 off. And as we get ready for 39 and a half off. Now, that whole team situation kind of played out uh, a little bit for you uh, in 2009 with the World Championships over at uh, uh, Lakes of Castingstone, Predator Bay in uh, in uh, in Alberta, Canada, and uh, there was there was a situation where you were involved as being a member of uh, of Team Canada, but they actually made a change at the last moment when they realised that the math better played out in in another scenario. Well, yeah, well, actually, for me, for me in 2009, Tony, I was. Uh, you know, I wasn't I wasn't in a situation to perform very well. I, had, I was coming off a broken ankle, and and uh, you know we had a Team Canada had a situation where you know some depth in some other events was going to be the the way to go, and it was the right way to go. They won the they won the team title. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a, it was a great World Championship for Canada at home, and and uh, you know it's a complicated formula. Y what you see is a six member team, but you need three scores in every event: slalom, tricks, and jump, and. You know, so how you how you build that team and and you know where where you need backup events, you know, so much depends on on you know the overall makeup of the field. All right, here we go. This is Jamie Ball at 10.75 meters, needing more than one to take the lead, and with three skiers remaining, she's done that. She gets rat does the S turn, does she get it? Yeah, looks like three at 39 for Jamie. That's a that's a big score. That's solid. I mean, that could end up being a backup score the way that she's been skiing recently. But let's have a look. Let's see what 39 and a half off looks like. And we got a confer confirmation of three. And uh, looking good, Drew. Just on the back of the ski, just wheeling up and just having to long pull there. Realized that the gig was up. Down. And there we go. Yeah. Jamie really, you know, is the architect of a, of a great pass there. Three's a, three's a big number, and it, and it puts her in a super position heading into the round two. Uh, in what is a, a top four or nothing situation if you want to be part of the final here. All right, so, yeah, that S turn there, just tightening up on the line, getting that ski before the next set of boat guides, and there we go. That's three, and that gives her the lead. All right, now, it's current world slalom champion. This is Manon Castard. And this, I would imagine, would be 13 meters as well. So, Manon Castard, who has a signature on that 2020 Conley GTR Slansky 66 inch that you can win as a prize for uh, accurately predicting the women's podium at SwissProSlalom.com. And let's, uh, let's hear from Wade. 
on the dock here with Jamie Bull. Jamie just finished your first round, three at 39. Maybe enough to make top four, but you want a little bit more, huh? Yeah, I played it a little safe there, but it's okay. Next round. The wind is just now coming up. Uh, could you feel it all on your body? Yeah, it's definitely super, super gusty. Down at the far end, it looks calm, but it's uh, definitely strong pushing on your back. Any changes for the second round? Uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, back to you, Tony. Thanks, Jamie. Why, thank you there, Wade. And uh, Jamie Bull looking in very, very good shape now with, with the possibility of uh, progressing. And uh, there is uh, Whitney McClintock about to take to the water. She's, she's all smiles out there, and uh, we look forward to welcoming her back to, uh, to competitive action. And I'm sure that there's one little person who will be absolutely chomping at the bit to, uh, to watch his mummy ski. All right, here we go. Look at this. This is Manon Castard. Skiing in perfect conditions here at Swiss. Won the World Championship in Malaysia in less than perfect conditions. So uh, she's capable of uh, doing it all in any, uh, any scenario. And, uh, and Drew looking, looking very good at this, uh, this juncture. Yeah, well, one thing I see in Manon skiing that it's no surprise she's a world champion with the kind of space she creates in the course. Manon is, is, is quick and really capable of running the pass on an early line. And you can, you can see all the way through just how early and ahead of the game she is. Right, you are keeping that ski ahead of her. Taking one or two hits, but that's nothing she hasn't experienced before. And she just keeps everything moving forward, no matter what happens. You know. So there we go. That is uh, Manon Castard. That is 11.25 meters now. Hey, folks. I'm Tony Lightfoot. He's Drew Ross. And this is the Swiss Pro Slalom for 2020. As we get ready to bring in Manon Castard. Manon Castard. Okay, we got a 38 into the wind here. Manon's in great shape, headed to three. A little bit of a hesitation, still, still very much on pace. And there it is. Third uh, skier through the 38 off pass. Perfectly done. And a skier who ordinarily skis over at, uh, uh, at La Canal or at Stad Pietro. Over there, uh, very close uh, to the uh, to the west uh, west coast of uh, France, the Atlantic coast, spending more of her time uh, over a uh, stateside in uh, in recent times. Probably more out of necessity than anything else. But I tell you what, looking strong at 11.25 meters and making this pass look. A lot more, a, a lot easier than the previous two. So she's dialed in at this point. So Manon Castar, 10.75 meters, 39 and a half off. Let's see how far she can get. The target score, the lead score is three. And, uh, and if you want to be a part of that prize draw, go to SwissProSlalom.com. Predict the podiums for women and men, and you could win yourself. Either a Conley GTR 66 inch or a D3 Ion. Both the latest models, both of them 66 inch. Here we go. 10.75 meters. Riding that Conley GTR. Keeping it going around buoy number two and number three. Look at it. Look at her go. 39 and a half off. Shuts it down on buoy number four. And that's enough for the lead. Uh, she. Uh, She's a smart skier. She uh, she doesn't get to where she is right now by. Uh That's a very calculated four buoys at 39 from Manon Castard. You can see the organization here. Big number one, head of the game out to two. Most important thing here for Manon is she she doesn't quite safety, but she's she's regulating things and just being sure that she can, you know, carry things through. Letting herself get a little bit down course, but knowing that four takes the lead. All right, so 
Good, good effort there from Manon Castard, shutting it down around buoy number four. Very, very smart skiing, very calculated, as uh, as Drew says. Looking through some of the comments uh, before we uh, before we take Whitney McClintock back out uh, out onto the water. Actually, one comment is actually directed to you, Drew, uh, asking, "Where's Doug?" I think Doug's tuned in. He's he's excited to watch this event. That's for sure. All right, aren't we all? And I'm sure he'll be uh, delighted to see the return of uh, Whitney McClintock Reaney, who returns to competitive action. Pretty amazing stuff here. Whitney's first son on the shoreline. Only a couple of months old here. All right, so. Not looking too bad, 14.25 meters. And uh, before we go on to our next pass, let's go to the dock and uh, where we find Wade. Who do you have with you? Hi, thanks, Tony. Here with Manon Castard, our reigning world champ, trying to add a Swiss uh, pro title to that. How was the first round? It's good. Um, very happy to do the first with my first set. Uh, good to get used to the bit of wind and, and you know both ends of the legs and stuff. I think I did a, a few mistakes, especially one at, at 39. Um, but, you know, second round coming up and we'll see how I can improve or, you know, uh, how I can ski. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Good luck. Back to you, Tony. Why, thank you there, Wade. And uh, we just saw uh, Whitney McClintock go for her opening pass. She started in on 14.25 meters. Now, I've, I've read through some of the social media posts that, uh, that Winnie McClintock puts out there, and she does put quite a few uh, things up there online, and she, she said that, uh, uh, I don't want to put words in, you know, but she, she's very, very pessimistic of her chances of actually putting herself through to the final uh, of this event or even putting, putting up a decent enough score. I mean, she's out there skiing, you know, almost just for the fun of it, I would say, but... I'll tell you what, take a look at this. Well, you never want to downplay Whitney McClintock. She's a multiple-time world champion, but, you know, she has just had her first child, and, and, you know, by admission, Whitney's out there just, you know, getting things going again. And, you know, it, it shows the value of the mental side of the, support, the sport. Whitney knows that there's a lot of value to, you know, returning to competition, you know, returning to play, and having her, having her head in the game is, is, is just as big a step or, or a, a parallel step to getting back to contention as, as the physical side. Yes, indeed, and uh, you can't uh, uh, you can't fault her uh, her effort out there at all, right? At this point, I mean, I mean, look at that a good little bit of slide down course off uh, buoy number two, but very much in control. Probably skiing with a with a few extra pounds that uh, that she wouldn't ordinarily wear ski with uh, uh, typically. But I, think, I think she looks great. I can't oh, yeah. believe she's she's to this level so quickly, and and uh, you know the fitness is there. It's it's pretty pretty remarkable stuff. Yes, indeed, and I mean she's she's skied almost to I don't know how how many weeks before she gave birth, right up right up until that time. I mean nothing major, nothing like this, but I mean she put one one of those wide radar slant skis on, and she just ripped it up on the course at about twenty six miles an hour. So she's she's. She stayed with it, so to speak. Regina Jake was on the dock side, getting ready. 12 meters for Whitney McClintock Reaney. Oh, look at that. This is some pretty awesome stuff that we're seeing here. And this is 12 meters. All oh, right. Oh, my word. 12 meters. Considering the major life event that uh, that's occurred, that's, that's just such a good, <laughs> just such a strong technique, and you know Whitney, Whitney's a connoisseur, and you can see in her technique all the time that every detail is just so methodical and so cultivated, crafted, and and by design to be able to, you know, put up the huge scores she has for so many years, and. You know, it, it's going to be a, such a big factor in Whitney coming back to, you know, the top and, and being on the podiums again is, is you know, just how, how meticulous she is technically. 
All right, let's see what she's got. 11.25 metres coming up. And uh, let's have a look at some of the top scores. Uh, we've got Ali Nicholson uh, currently in third place with one. Uh, this is at 10.75, by the way. Three buoys at uh, 10.75 is in second place by Jamie Ball. Manon Custard is currently in the lead with four. So those are some uh, some pretty sizable targets. We'll see how far she can get through 11.25 meters. Uh, she uh, she got second place last season in that r as a result of that runoff against Regina Jaquist last season. A little slow off number one, round number two. Ugh. She tried the double west turn right there. I don't know whether she got all of that. So one and one and a half at least. I don't think Whitney's felt that kind of speed in a while. That's probably, it could well be her first time on the 38 line length. And, and uh, you know, with the, the tailwind cooking out there, she's, you know, sizzling out to two ball and, and didn't want to quite be, make that aggressive S back into center. So we see a one and a half. Ooh. And it will take a little bit of time for her to be 100% naturally, but uh, there we go. That's, uh, that's Whitney McClintock. 522 pounds of force against that line, equivalent to 3.4 uh, to 1 in, uh, in comparison to her body weight. I'm sure she appreciates those stats. So, Tony, with this 2U Snacks contest of, of strongest pull, does that ratio come into play, or is it strictly the absolute number? Absolute number. We're going with absolute. So, there's your top four. Costard, Bull, Nicholson, Jaramillo. So, here we go. Regina Jaquist, this is at 32 off, or 13 meters. So, just to give you a quick stat, all of those skiers that have actually gone in at 32 off have actually recorded scores eventually into 10.75 meters of 39 and a half off. And uh, Wade, who do you have dockside? Here with Whitney McClintock, a new mommy. The baby will be two months tomorrow, so this is first set. In a tournament, how many sets in practice so far? I was thinking about that this morning. It's been like 10, maybe 12 sets I've done in practice. Just one a day. Every every 13. couple of days I take a day off. It's a lot harder coming back this time than I ever imagined. Six months off of being in the course and no working out really. So I'm heavier and weaker than ever as an athlete. And um, I just love it. So I wanted to come ski this weekend. Well, that's it. We've seen her smile. We love that. So for all you mommies out there, she's your motivation. Back to you, Tony. Yes, indeed. A smile that can light up a room right now. There we go. That is uh, Whitney McClintock reigning. And uh, predict the podium finishes and win yourself a ski. Go to SwissProSlalom.com to enter. You could win either a, a D3 Ion or a Conley GTR. And you can also vote for the skier of the day as well at SwissProSlalom.com. Here we go. Regina Jaquis. Multiple time world champion. Multiple time world record holder. Makes slalom skiing look slow. Tony, so much to learn every time Regina takes to the water. If, if Back at home, fans, if, if you like slalom skiing, if you like water skiing, Stop what you're doing every time you get a chance to watch this. It's it's just art. All right, so looking strong. So looking at some of these comments. These uh, comments coming through are uh, thanking us for the coverage. Well, we thank you for for watching here at the uh, the Swiss Pro Slalom for 2020. One person here who's just commented thinks that at least two of the women skiers will get into 10.25 meters. Well, well, we'll just have to wait and see. I think that's a, that's a f pretty fair bet. That Tony. might, th yeah. Not enough for me to stake 20 bucks or anything like that. But I mean, it's 
I mean, once if you've got skiers like Manon and Regina and Jamie Bull in the mix, then anything is possible in that regard. All right, here we go. Regina Jaquis, 11.25 meters. Setting her pass at 11.25 meters into a fairly stiff breeze. Look at this. Skied into 41 off a couple of times at a, a recent uh, record capability tournament in Zachary, Louisiana. And has been very, very consistent in that regard as well. So Regina Jake was, will have a stab at 10.75 meters with the next run. So Drew, what do you see here? Well, I mean, the most important thing for Regina on the 38 off pass is, is you know, she's feeling things out. She wants, you know, wants to, you know, really dial everything in. Uh, but it's a pass that you can't afford to miss. I mean, so, you know, she's skiing with a lot of power. She's she's up course and, and really well organized. But, you know, by the same time, she's got to, you know, got to make sure she can't, you know, no chances to take and, and just dial things in for the 39 coming up. All right. So... Looking at uh, Regina Jake was with the instant replay and just just got so much power and just so much in reserve out there. I mean, at, at 11.25 meters, it's meant to be hard, but I mean, she just turns, gets set, holds a position and just just absolutely just catapults herself from one side of the course to the next. And it, it looks easy. That's what it's meant to look like. So here we go with our bow camera brought to you by Ravenol Oil. Here we go, 10-7. Round buoy number one. Oh, looking strong. Round number two. If she can get past number four, she'll have the lead. Round number four. Look at this. And I tell you what, that prediction of a score going into 10.25 meters is looking pretty darn good right now. Yeah, once again, Regina shows why she's the world record holder just at the top of her game. There's a tailwind out there. It's hard to see on the camera, but, you know, Regina really has got things organized today. She's, she's top of her game right now. And, I mean, the trees and the environment around this lake does a very, very good job to mask the fact that there is a fairly strong tailwind here. I mean, it could, it could, it could be blowing like several miles an hour. But on this particular lake, you wouldn't be able to see it, and you'd barely feel it out there. But well, you can see it push, pushed her a bit on ball three, and she needed a huge four, which she got, leading with the right shoulder a bit out to five, almost a safety to the tail, and then watch her, watch her just power out to six. Yes, good hip rotation, good, good power. And, I mean, she isn't the tallest of our women slam skiers, far from it. But, I mean, she made the decision, you know, years and years ago that if she was to succeed in this event then she'd better get powerful and uh, better better use that to her advantage because the height wasn't going to be there for her but i tell you what here she comes this is 10.25 meters our first and only female skier so far in this event to get to that line length there's one there's two. Oh, look at this and tries to make a play on three, but it's going to be two. It is going to be two buoys there for, uh, for Regina Jaquis on 10.25 meters. As we look at this again there, Drew. That's a great start on 41 off for Regina. Strong, strong cut out to two in good enough shape to put a turn on it, which she does. Maybe a little bit of separated, little, little hesitation out of two. Not going to make a go at three, but, but a great, great performance. Regina's all but etching her way into the finals with a score of two at 41. So two buoys at 41 off. I think, I think it's fairly safe to say that uh, she's probably through to the next round of competition, not even taking into account that she hasn't skied yet in round two, but uh, I think it'll be a safe bet to assume that Regina Jaquis has that score, or at the very least a backup to make it through to the next round, but there you go. So there we go, Regina Jaquis, your top female skier off round one. There is your leaderboard. With, uh, with Regina, Manon, Jamie, Ali, Luisa, 
Alice, Chelsea, Rea, Ali, Whitney, Jessica, and Paige. And then the two other scores that we're looking for from there are from Anna Gay and also Natasha Roja. Those are the uh, those are the skiers on the leaderboard. We're going to take a little bit of a uh, of a slight break whilst we change out boat drivers. You are watching continuing coverage of the 2020 Swiss Pro Slalom right here at the Swiss Water Ski Resort. Back to you in just a few.